What's up, wave makers? It's me, Mommy Suna. Obama. And we got more fails today. I just have so many to go through because you guys just send me so many good ones. Okay, I mean, I have nothing to say before we get started here. So let's just jump into our first video. Oh my gosh. And there's so many things I could start with, dude. Okay, maybe this one's probably the most important message to get out. So one of you guys sent me a few stories from this lady with a dog. A warning, because I know every time we talk about animals and essential oils people get really upset or animals and their owners respective MLM companies in general but essential oils especially is really upsetting and you're gonna see why here we have videos of her essentially poisoning her dog I listen to these things and I see these videos and I'm like all you had to do was do a quick and simple Google search. You don't even have to click on a link. You just have to type is whatever oil safe for dogs. It'll bring you an automatic snippet from a website. Like, I mean, yeah, probably do go look more into it. Click on your sources and, you know, find out what you're reading from, but it is not that hard. That's what she said. <laughs> These people will always kind of use the essential oil card as like, oh, I use it for my kids. I use it for my dogs because we just want to be healthy. I, I want to do what's right for them and all that. For the most part for most of this these people aren't doing that to hurt anybody you know but it's kind of willful ignorance because again it's really really easy to find the information that will lead you towards maybe I shouldn't put this on my dog or my child because it, it can be toxic anyway so here's the first video you will never look back on life and say I spent too much time with my dog Okay, so this Instagram account is called Low Tox Wellness, which <gasps> all these essential oil babes are always like, no toxins, mm, no chemicals, mm, okay, everything is a chemical, first of all. And second of all, low tox, like, okay, we're gonna see right now how toxic this sh can be to dogs, but no, no, like, God forbid you use a flea and tick collar, you, like, God forbid you use an actual formulated product for dogs, specifically made for dogs, with their health and safety in mind. No, no, no. Can't do that. Gotta use essential oils. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so she's using this oil called Terra Armor. Obviously, as we can see here, it's a doTERRA, hun. Let's see what's in Terra Armor, shall we? Okay, so this is an outdoor blend. I think this is specifically made to wear outdoors to keep the buggies away. And it does say in the description that it can be used by every member of the family outdoors and throughout the home. Well, I mean, a lot of people, yeah, they can Consider their dogs to be part of the family but like this ain't it that's not what they're talking about anyway this says nothing about using it for pets because this is a blend the first ingredient is fractioned coconut oil so it's diluted already so that's one thing that's good okay because we don't see that a lot these people never dilute anything so it's almost impressive that doTERRA is doing that for them anyway first essential oil on here is ylang ylang whoa black betty ylang ylang so if we do a quick search just is ylang ylang safe for dogs. Many liquid potpourri products and essential oils, including oil of cinnamon, citrus, pennyroyal, peppermint, pine, sweet birch, tea tree, wintergreen, and ylang ylang are poisonous to dogs and also says both ingestion and skin exposure can be toxic. Okay, low tox lifestyle who, ma'am? Not for your dog, uh-uh. And obviously there's other stuff in here. I mean, I would assume that they're listing ingredients by how much is in the formulation from greatest to least. So if ylang ylang is the first one, then ylang ylang is the most prominent essential oil in this blend from my understanding. Then you have tamanu seed, which I don't know what that is. Let's see what this is. Oh, look, look at this. You guys, seriously, is tamanu seed safe for dogs? No, tamanu oil contains toxic compounds that can cause poisoning in dogs when ingested. It does say it can be used topically for minor skin problems. It has antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties, blah, 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 blah. So from what I'm seeing is they can't ingest it, but if you put it on their skin, it can be fine. Oh, I thought your body absorbs everything that you put on it. Ugh. Now, this being said, this specific ingredient 
like, yeah, she was putting it on the dog's collar and not, like, on its skin or something, but you're putting that collar on the dog's body, and then dogs lick themselves and stuff, you know? I mean, obviously a dog can't lick its own neck, but you never know, dude. To me, I'm just like, probably shouldn't risk it. Um, I'm pretty sure eucalyptus isn't safe for dogs. Eucalyptus is actually toxic to dogs and humans when ingested, and it can also cause irritation when applied to the skin. I mean, come on, dude. And let's not forget that they're diffusing this shit too. So, like, you want to talk about ingesting, I mean, isn't inhalation a form of ingesting? Like, I would say so, right? Anyway, okay, so this next one. Same lady, same dog. Low-tox lifestyle. doTERRA aroma touch essential oil for dog aches and pains. Yeah, because a dog can tell you that its muscles hurt. I mean, listen, like, obviously there are gonna be some times where dogs might yelp or something because, you know, because they're in, like, actual pain, but, like, most circumstances, like, you're not gonna be like, oh, my poor dog has a stiff neck today or something. <laughs> My poor dog's shoulder blades need a massage. Like, anyway, they do put on here, always dilute with coconut essential oil, so that's good. In the arms of the angel, fly Rubbing it all over the dog. From here, from this dark, cold oil room, and the toxins that you fear you are pulled it's so stupid because it's like archie loves it yeah of course he loves it you're like rubbing him down and scratching him he doesn't know he doesn't know that you're essentially applying poison to him. Okay, so Aroma Touch essential oil. So first of all, let's see what's in that. I gotta find out what the other product is too. Cypress leaf. I'll look that up, but peppermint plant is the second oil in here, and we already saw that peppermint is, in fact, toxic to dogs. Cypress tree I'm seeing isn't a big deal in most cases. Someone on Cora said that it can be mildly toxic, but, like, I don't know what their sources are. Peppermint, obviously, we know. Marjoram leaf? Marjoram is an herb that you may recognize from the spice aisle at the grocery store, but it is dangerous for dogs. The actual toxins in marjoram are, are not known, but it causes gastric irritation leading to diarrhea and vomiting. How do you not know what the toxins are? <laughs> like, I mean, I'm no scientist, but that sounds kind of weird. CanDogsEatIt.com says, no, marjoram is not safe for dogs to eat. She just rubbed this all over the dog's body in places where the dog can lick and ingest. Then, of course, there's basil, grapefruit, and lavender, I know, is one of the very few essential oils that I don't think cause any issues. But anyway, so she rubbed that all over the dog. What was the other product? It looked like she had, like, some kind of hand soap or something. It's just coconut oil. <laughs> <laughs> doTERRA just makes their own coconut oil in a little pump. I mean, I guess that's convenient. It's probably super overpriced. I mean, you could even be like, well, she did dilute it before she put- It's like, it doesn't matter. Why would you risk this? Ma'am, <laughs> that's toxic. Ma'am, your low-tox lifestyle can only go so far because once you start giving it to your dog, then it's not very low-tox anymore. You're literally introducing toxins into your dog's system and making content about it so that other people might do it to their dog dogs too. It really makes me upset. I get that they're like, oh, I just want what's best for them, but like, just Google it? Even if your upline is like, no, all essential oils are so safe for everybody and everything and every animal and blah blah, like, of course they're gonna say that sh just because your upline says that doesn't mean you should just go with it. Like, Google it, and if you don't like the results because it says the opposite of what your upline says, I know you're gonna be like, well, I trust everything my upline says. Blah. I mean, why would you risk it? Why would you risk it? Anyway, we can move on here. That's just so frustrating. Speaking of frustrating, <laughs> this next one is mind-blowingly infuriating and disgusting. I'm not even gonna tell you what it's about, even though I'll probably put something in the thumbnail and title <laughs> about this video because it's just that frustrating. So maybe you have an idea of it already, but get ready to get pissed off. Like, I'm telling you right now, I'll put a trigger warning on the screen here too. But, uh, okay, here we go. So I'm on my way to Stacy's funeral. It's a sad day. As a grieving mom, watching my friend go through burying their child and the family and everything that goes with it. It makes all my trauma roll and new, but it really just hurts. It just isn't the way it's supposed to be. So I thought I would stop in and tell you that I use Young Living every day. It's an investment that I make in myself because I think I'm worth it. 
today I've got joy in my hair I've got hope on my wrist and I've got my tranquil roller in my pocket hopefully that will help get me through this day and anybody else that might need it so just a reminder for new customers the sale goes on till the 31st 100 PV or more and you get an extra 15% off put something on loyalty and you unlock the 24% for the rest of the year for, or for an entire year so have a good day and love the ones you're with There's a lot wrong with this video. First and foremost, another MLM distributor trying to sell their product while they're driving. So safe, wow. But that's obviously not the most shocking part. Like I don't really have to explain this to you, but if you're asking yourself, did that really just happen? If you're asking yourself even more specifically, did this woman really just use the death of someone else's child to sell Young Living? Yes, yes she did. Could you, can you just, what state? of mind do you have to be in to be like you know what this is gonna be a great opportunity to pitch my mlm <laughs> like what i'm sorry what <laughs> even like the mlm aside thing too like she literally made that about herself also which really frustrates me she's like i'm a grieving mother which is you know i get it okay i totally understand i, I would never wish any parent lose their child in that way that is heartbreaking and horrifying and i'm I'm sure that trauma is real. I mean, I've had miscarriages, but I've obviously never lost like a here physical in my arms child. Like I can't even imagine that trauma. That being said, if you were to go through something like that and one of your friends shows up and is just like trying to be like, wow, this makes my trauma raw again. And it's like, that's not helping. Can you just be there for your friend? Can you be there and support your friend and not try to make her kid's funeral about you? And then of course it's only made worse because not not only is she making the funeral about her, she's making the funeral about Young Living, about essential oils, and basically saying that these essential oils have healed her trauma. I don't know, but something tells me that this particular lady is gonna end up in the top MLM fails of 2023. It's only March, but I feel like she's absolutely gonna be in there. Like using the death of any child, but especially some like a child that's not even your own, to use that as a sales pitch is so morally depraved and I can't find the words to describe how gross this is. Well, let's move on to something a little less heartbreaking because I know these first two have been a little bit of uh, some doozies here. Kids and, and dogs and stuff, you know, people using essential oils in vulnerable situations and or on vulnerable creatures. <laughs> let's move on. So you guys, the amount of people who have sent this and others like this from the same people people to me would astound you. <laughs> so basically, uh, on Instagram lately, there's been this, oh my god, what is, it? what is it? I think they're called like Beach Boss Influencers or something. So these videos have been appearing as sponsored posts on a lot of your Instagram profiles, apparently, as well as I've been told that either this commercial or one similar, because they have a few, uh, have appeared before my videos, and it, <laughs> it is so bad. First of all, let me put it this way. A lot of times, like, when you got, like, body or who else used to advertise on my videos a lot? I know Beachbody slash body has maybe Avon and like Mary Kay. Like, I don't know. I've gotten a few MLMs where people are like, oh my God, why did I just get an ad for an MLM on your video? Blah, blah, blah. Like, don't worry, I skipped it. The thing is that I think a lot of people need to understand is that when these ads, so, so this is a network marketing positive ad that we're gonna watch here. Even if a full on MLM company is advertising on my channel or anyone else's channel, it's actually, a really good thing for us anyway for us in the anti-MLM movement because it means like basically with advertising the companies will pay a platform like let's say YouTube for example or Instagram whatever they will pay basically advertising dollars and set a budget with those dollars and then the platform will distribute it out to users who are or I guess like content that is relevant I suppose I think this is why I think because anti-MLMers regularly also 
use like the hashtag just MLM or network marketing or something like that. So the algorithm basically thinks that anti-MLM content is also relevant. So they put ads like this on our videos. So basically what that means is they're wasting their ad dollars. They are paying the platform to essentially pay me. <laughs> like they, in a roundabout way, they're kind of paying my bills unintentionally. What they want to do is shut all of us up, but really what they're doing is they're giving an advertising budget to an algorithm that doesn't really know what the f it's doing and th these ads are appearing on my videos and Chelsea's videos and Julie Joe's videos and whoever else's videos and obviously 99% of the people who watch <laughs> our content are also anti MLMers so it's ineffective marketing that advertisement being on one of my videos is not going to get them a sale so I just want to put that out there because I think a lot of people don't really understand that they get more upset and they're just like what are they doing and it's like just let them do it I'm getting my paycheck through ad revenue here on this platform and that ad revenue comes from the companies who are paying the platform to advertise for them. So I'm happy to take their money. I'm happy that they're wasting their money on my videos and others in the movement. So that being said, let's watch this terribly cringy ad. Um, actually there's two of them, but this is the one that I think you guys have sent me the most. And again, like a bazillion of you guys have sent this to me. Stop. Hey, if you're a network marketer, stop posting about your products and opportunities all over social media. Stop sending spammy join my team messages to strangers and stop begging your friends and family to join your team. I get it. You are a network marketer and you want to grow your team and get more customers. You might be doing everything your upline tells you to do. You're not seeing any growth, plus you want to vomit. Thankfully, <laughs> there's a better way. You can totally skyrocket your network marketing business online if you know how to do it the right way and we'll show you how later in this video. Unfortunately, most network marketers don't know how to grow an audience of raving fans. Okay, real quick, because I was trying to get through this whole thing without pausing because, well, first of all, the lady on the left here, in every shot she's in, in the background, she is staring straight into the lens with this creepy, culty smile on her face. <laughs> It is so terrifying and it makes me so uncomfortable. Like that woman in particular. The, most of the other ladies are just kind of like looking around. And they're not necessarily always looking at the camera, but this lady has direct eye contact with just a... <laughs> you know that kind of smile like want to join my network marketing day. I had to pause it there because the audio is so bad. And then I was like, why don't they just get lapel mics? And then I look and the two people behind her who are not speaking have lapel mics on, but the speaker does not. What? <laughs> what? You want to buy their product and join their team, but it's not your fault. You just never learned how. That's why we made it our mission to help network marketers all over the world leverage the internet to build the business of their dreams. Now, get this. Most network marketers, when they message strangers on social media, they would say something like this. Hey, I have this amazing ground floor opportunity that you- Wait, I just- I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to clown on this a little bit more. Could you imagine that, like, if every cut that I made in a YouTube video, I started, like, all the way back here, and then I just, like, slowly moved closer to you and closer to the mic every time I <laughs> start a new cut, and then I'm back here again, and I'm just still just, like, slowly. Anyway, so MLMs are bad, and you shouldn't join a network marketing business. <laughs> like, why are they doing that? Why are they starting all in, in a line, not moving, and then the moment they yell, action, they're like, time to walk again. <laughs> Why are they walking towards the camera in every shot? It is so awkward. Not only are they just walking in every shot for no apparent reason, but they're also just all being so creepy about it. <laughs> this seems like a cult advertisement, dude. In a roundabout way, it kind of is. They're Beach Boss influencers, and that makes me wonder if they're with Body slash Beach Body. But like, I, I don't know much about this team or if it even is a team. These people could all be from different network markets marketing companies and they all just come together to do like a network marketing course. I don't know, I guess I should look into that, huh? Yeah, because it just says network marketing coaches. Okay, I tried to go to this lady's website and Google Chrome won't let me. <laughs> Isn't it fascinating how like hardcore these people go to hide what network marketing company they're with? 
Get four of our best courses, a strategy call, plus 10 bonuses for $4,391 off. Yeah, okay, I'm sure your total value of your course is over $4,000. Yeah, sure, totally believe that. I've looked at three people and I can't find which network marketing company any of these people are in. Um, I'm gonna like scroll through through before like see if i can find anything from before they started this shit just to find out what mlm these people were in this lady posts a lot and all of her posts are super cringy <laughs> oh wait ba brain fog be gone what is this <gasps> biohacker nutrigenomics drop a comment if you want to biohack your mitochondria and get better sleep ma'am i don't think that's how that works people are like what do i have to do and then she's like i'll message you <laughs> if i had to guess i'm I'm pretty sure she's with Velavita, which yikes. If you didn't know the CEO of Velavita, what's his name? Costagara uh, threatened to sue me, sent me a, <laughs> I have a video about it, but he sent me a uh, bullshit cease and desist letter. <laughs> it's really funny. Anyway, we can go back and finish this. I, I just, I don't know if that means that all of these people are with Bella Vita, but generally like network marketing coaches will train anybody no matter what MLM they're in. It's just fascinating to me because these people clearly are working this <laughs> business now instead of their MLM. And it's like, how do you, how successful were you in network marketing before you started doing this? Why is this always the next step that people in MLMs take? The clear reason, in my opinion, is network marketing coaches are more profitable than actual network marketing itself because so many people are struggling with growing their biz and being a successful network marketer. They're all struggling so hard because of all the reasons we know that <laughs> the system just is set up for 99% of people to fail in order for the top 1% to thrive. There's just so many factors that are against everyone's favors in MLMs. So they end up getting stuck and they're like, well, my upline says to do this and it's not working. My upline says to do this and it's not working. How did they win doing this, but I can't do it, blah, blah, blah. So then you end up looking for like external help because you're like, clearly I'm uh, there's something I'm missing. And here's the secret. None of these courses offer like a secret. Like, here's the thing that you're not doing that you need to be doing. Like, that that does not exist. I'll tell you the one thing that I did to grow my network marketing business. <laughs> like, um, ma'am, it's just another scam. Network marketing scammers are scamming scammers. Does that make sense? <laughs> I really do feel like this is just a, another, a group of women who are preying on vulnerable people. And mostly, again, mostly women. And women empowerment, my butt, dude. You are actively preying on people and taking money from MLM wannabes, <laughs> upline wannabes, and trying to make them think that you have all the answers and blah, 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 and you're just willingly taking their money and they're not going to succeed through this at all. Like there's nothing special here that they have to offer. There's nothing revolutionary or different. Like it's just another f***ing scam. You would be so great at, would you mind checking it out? If not, not big deal, which, if you didn't know, it's very spammy and rude. Uh -huh. Lucky for us and our students, we figured out a better way. This might sound crazy, but we've spent over six figures to learn what we know how to do now. We actually hired a top network marketers, mentors, copy experts, brand experts, and we put our brains together to figure out a better way of doing things. A better way to attract the right people into your downline by getting your qualified perfect prospects coming to you wanting to join your team and customers coming to you as well without feeling like a salesy weirdo. Our students have used this system to grow audience and teams of thousands of amazing people. Someone give this woman a lapel too. mic. <laughs> you just need to be smart about it. So here's what we want you to do. Click the link below to learn our proven system. We're giving it away for free. Our proven three step formula. And the best part is this formula works for any niche and any level of experience. Even if you're shy, have no following, no team and no results. And again, it's free. You have nothing to lose. Click the link and we'll see you on the inside. They say that that is free, but they have, I'm pretty sure they have like a full on like course. The social influencer formula is supposedly free, but then there's a seven second domination formula. Oh no, that's $37. Oh wow. Okay. Done for you social media templates. Oh, only $50. Wow. Engaging questions. What well, I mean like this kind of 
I'm like, look at any upline. Isn't that something that they always kind of say like, oh my God, who was it? I think it was Mama Frank from Paparazzi. Oh wait, no. I think it was the other lady who was with Mama Frank. Anyway, I don't remember what her name is. They were like, just watch your upline. If your upline posts on Monday, a post about her kids. And then on Tuesday, she usually posts about food. And then on Wednesday, she be, blah, blah, like she gives a list. And she's like, maybe do all those things, but like switch them up. And you know, if your upline says on Monday that she was with her grandkid, Griselda, is that a name? <laughs> Don't just copy and paste it. Like, put your own grandkids' names, you know? <laughs> it's just like, no sh**, dude. Like, what are you talking Like, obviously. You're following people that are successful. You can follow their guide, but don't try to imitate them, okay? So what do I mean by that? If Mama Frank does an attraction marketing post and she's talking about her grandkids, okay? If you have grandkids, yeah, you go and you talk about your grandkids, but remember, don't use the same names. They're like, those are hers and those are <laughs> yours, right? Anyway, yeah, like they push it all the time. They're just like, just copy what your upline's doing because clearly they're successful. And it's like, okay, so why do you need to pay $50 for pre-made templates? And it's like, you literally just go to any upline. <laughs> Look at their social media for five seconds. Oh, uh, let's see, grab a social influencer formula. Let's see what I have to do to get instant access. Should I do it? I guess I should do it, huh? Yes, I will. Uh, wait, hold on. Your free social influencer formula is on its way to your inbox. In the meantime, discover how to, and then they're like, do you want access to this $13 something else? What is this? Like, this is something else. <laughs> this is another thing that's like, oh, $13. Wow. Hmm. Literally nothing. <laughs> There's nothing in my inbox. Spam? There's no spam, all mail. Oh, my social influencer formula is here. Wow, <laughs> this email address super didn't want me to see any of this. Okay, download the formula. Got it, I got the thing. Social influencer formula. Look at these ladies on a beach. Wow, they really are some beach bosses. Five successful network marketing professionals who were in your shoes just a few years ago. But it's like, why did you quit then? If you were so successful, you know? We loved the industry and we did all the things our uplines told us to do, everything from home parties to chasing strangers at malls your upline told you to do that get a new upline sis damn you clearly should not be doing that in this short ebook this is a book how many pages are here there's 21 pages to this just tell me the three steps holy sh Major pitfalls of social media. One, stop constantly posting about your products. Two, stop branding your company. What does that mean? We're sorry to break it to you, but your products and your amazing company is not your attractor factor. Ew. That made me feel gross just saying that. Simply because there are hundreds of thousands of other distributors who are selling the exact same thing. Even Amazon has your products and it's really hard to compete with that. Won't you agree? Instead, you need to learn how to become one of a kind. Okay, yeah, you're, you all wear the same hats. You all go on Instagram live and say the same all the time. What is unique about any of these people? That's why we like came up with the whole hun thing anyway, because they all just like fit under the hun umbrella. <laughs> uh, you can solve all the prospects problems. Well, there's more than three steps here. Anyway, stop adding a bunch of random people to your friends list. It's better to have 50 friends who are loving your content and engaging than 5,000 people who never engage and they have no clue who you are and why your posts are in their newsfeed. Probably because they accepted your friend request, but you know, stop sending copy paste messages. Obviously we say this all the time. Please stop doing that. Here's the actual steps. This is so ridiculous. Step one, grow the right audience. If you set up your attraction strategy right, they will find you. And then they don't necessarily tell you how to do that. They give you examples. If you're in weight loss, your perfect prospects are not just all overweight people, but those who are actively trying and looking for different ways to lose weight. If you're in finance, you should be after people who are aware of their financial problems and want to solve them. Oh wow, look at they have a whole little worksheet. This is all like, could you imagine someone sliding into your DMs and just like being like, here's eight questions that are very specific that I need you to answer for me right now. It's like, to me, I'm like, that's too much work. Like, just tell me what you're selling or get the fuck out. Stop messaging me back. Just like, I came to you, didn't I? Next step, where do you find people? Get a mentor. Oh, oh okay, that was all step one. You guys get the point. I'm not gonna keep going through this. It is fascinating that this is all just kind of like basic sh one-on-one -on -one coaching calls and social recruiting secrets. Okay, so so of course they end this whole thing with, if you want to be successful, give us money, basically. Wow. Wow. Cute look. Let's do one more here. This, there's a lot actually. I mean, when I say one more, it's one lady, but like one of you guys sent me her Facebook stories and I downloaded them all because it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I believe she's with Plexus. And so as you guys know, in network marketing, there's the end of the month rush 
and then the first of the month all the uplines get up in their training groups and stuff and they're like okay guys it's a brand new month and then they start you know going off about I don't know motivational shit or whatever so that's basically what we're looking at here a beginning of the month motivation chit chat with a plexus upline and it's ridiculous let's watch hey friends happy thursday I hope you had a great start to the month yesterday. Tell me, what did you do? What did you accomplish? What is something that made you feel good? So anyway, what did I do yesterday? Oh my goodness. So I got the, I got the month started with my team, um, getting them ready for what's to come this month because people can earn an iPad. Actually, they can earn more than one iPad. I did a lot of training. I do that on a daily basis with personal development and business development. Um, I also went up and spent time with my mom and uh, then went to the park for a walk oh my and cares. met friends for dinner for um, a friend's birthday. So, you know, are you doing things that pour into you, that fills your cup? cup? What do you oh, do God. on a daily basis? <laughs> to make you feel good. These people are so predictable. So first of all, you know what's interesting to me is that knowing how hardcore they rush at the end of the month, right? Because everyone's gotta make sure that they either keep their ranks or do whatever they have to do to rank up on the last day of the month. And she's like, hope you guys were able to accomplish a lot starting your month yesterday. And it's like, maybe they need to rest. They just got done like running around like chickens with their heads cut off for the past few days. Like maybe they just needed to rest, but like, oh no, that's not the boss babe mindset. Uh-uh. So I have a lot of travel planned this month. Um, I think I shared that, you know, with you, but specifically I have two big leadership um, trips that I'm investing in and I'm investing in myself so that I can then invest more into my team and to help people dream bigger. Um, I am going out to our corporate headquarters for our leadership excellence training. And then the very next week, I head back out to Utah uh, for Brooks Six Figure Summit. And we're already doing training for both of those events leading up to, so there's a lot of groundwork being laid. But um, in the Good Life Coaching community with Brooke, she did an intentions call yesterday. And it's about, you know, your gratitude. And it, it was so good to start the day, start the month off with those good intentions. So let me know if you want more information. It's just so great to start our month with toxic positivity. <laughs> That's basically all I heard. <laughs> just be grateful, just be thankful. Oh my gosh, Griffin, you colored all over yourself. Look at this, look at this. What is happening? Griff. All right, so I was thinking this morning while I was listening to some training videos, um, especially about gratitude and, and setting your intentions. Um, thank you, Brooke Hemingway. But I was thinking about my videos here, my little lives that I do with you is, is I wanna shift those a little bit and wanna talk to you more about what is possible, what is possible. I've already been on a call with one of my team members this morning talking about her dreams and her goals. And one of the things I shared with her was my goals, my personal goals, as well as goals for our team as a whole. And one of those big goals is to bring six, six. I wanna bring six moms home this year so that they can work from home on their own time, just using their phone, not having to clock in and clock out, not having to request vacation or holidays off. That is a big goal of mine is to bring them home bring them home it's such a gross like some hey some moms don't want to work from home some moms like they're not well i say nine to five they're real jobs is basically what i mean what? to say yeah i don't even know man i do at least remember back when i had my real job and i was a new mom to sparrow like of course i i missed her like all day the whole time i was at work i just wanted to be back home with her but at the same time now having a, a second kid and you know I was I've been home with him since he's been born I realized the value in just kind of like getting away for even if it's just you know for a half shift even if you're only working part-time or something like there is a value to I don't want to say leaving your like mom duties or whatever but like kind of like it helps you kind of like clear your mind and keep the perspective wider in the case of motherhood not every mom wants to be brought home like ugh. 
Yeah, so, you know, the other thing was when I was getting ready this morning, I chose this hat, Grit and Grace. Um, and that's really what it takes to be successful, you guys, is a lot of grit and a lot of grace because I have to understand, I've now owned two businesses. I learned a lot with my first business, a lot. And yeah. I have to stop and think, okay, most of the people that I coach now to be business owners, they've never had a business before. So they're learning. You're not a business you know, owner. I have to think, okay, remember when, you know, I was learning about all the things and I have all to step things. back and think, okay, have a lot of grace here because they're learning what it is to be a business owner. And You're a lot not of people a business don't understand owner. what that takes, but it takes I don't a think lot you do. of grit and grace, <laughs> but you have to work hard. It takes a lot of hard work and good, good, good intentions. She all ended it like good intentions no when you are in an mlm when you are somebody's upline you have recruited those people and you continue to recruit people to grow your business like the intention is to grow i say business but we know that they don't actually own this business but you know it's to benefit them regardless of how your recruitment into your team affects the person you recruited doesn't matter because it benefits you so good intentions who they're in my opinion there is no no way to ethically recruit anybody let alone with good intentions because no matter what these people say they always like to be like oh no i'm just in it because i like to help people i just want to bring mothers home you want to recruit whoever will listen you just know that moms are more, more vulnerable so that's why you you're focusing on bringing moms home this month but regardless it doesn't matter who they are where they're from what they've been as long as you love me it doesn't matter none of that matters Matters because ultimately it benefits you. Your intention is always selfish, putting you first, no matter what these people say. You're and you're in the most cases, you're not actually helping them. So you're financially fing them over somehow or fing over their relationships or telling them to essentially engage in toxic behavior in their friendships and relationships like that that you're not helping anybody. You're only helping yourself. You're helping grow your downline. That's what you're doing. So good intentions my ass. All right. So let's get this pink drink mixed up because mm. if it wasn't for this pink drink, I would not be where I am today. And that's in all shapes and forms of life. Um, you know, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, thanks to this pink drink, I have been able to really, really learn and grow in all of those areas. It's a drink mix ma'am i'm sorry but like tell me you're in a cult without saying you're in a cult like this is cult speak it really is to tell your audience that you're so dedicated to your fucking drink powder because it has just changed every aspect of your life it's like i think you're being hyperbolic <laughs> i don't think you really mean that <laughs> It's kind of like a cover-up, isn't it? I guess I always say that, huh? Like the product is essentially a beard because it's really underneath it. It's a pyramid scheme. So it's like the product never means anything. The product is never the foundation of any multi-level marketing company. And that's just the truth. Like if you didn't have your pink drink, you would probably still be in the same mindset and shit you are. Like it doesn't, like replace your pink drink with anything. Hi, Pippi. Replace your pink drink with essential oils. Replace it with makeup. Replace it with blah, blah, whatever. Like it doesn't matter what it is. Is. like the product doesn't matter what matters is that there's a business model beneath it that has propelled you forward at the expense of 99% of the other people who are going to join you I'm so fortunate and blessed to be able to help other people grow in those areas <laughs> but so, you're not you know I don't miss a day I don't miss a day of my pink drink I don't miss a day of connecting and building relationships and supporting people. This hurts. Um, you know, helping people dream big. And that's all it is, isn't it? It's just a dream. A dream that they have a less than 1% chance of succeeding in. Dude, seriously, and then I always think of this too. I'm like, who the f makes it their lifelong dream to sell shit? 
the drink mix is on the internet. It's nobody's dream. That's nobody's dream. I think at the end of it, they just, like, the dream is to be financially free and to have time freedom or whatever. Hi, Pop-Tart. They don't care how they do it. They just want to find a company that they can do that with. I think that's also why you see so many MLM reps just jump from company to company looking for the right fix. Like, because again, the product doesn't matter. Yeah, this pink drink is what did it. Yeah, no, no. You got lucky in the business model and that's it. Caring, motivating, encouraging, and educating. That's what I do every single day. And I hope that you've been able to learn something from me. I've learned that you're in a cult, ma'am. Hydrate is next. So you guys know I put what I put in my drink every day. So I start with the protein powder. It's the unflavored protein powder called Isopure. Ew, that has to taste like something, right? There's no way that you can have a protein powder that tastes like nothing. It has to have a taste. I don't buy it. And then my pink drink. And then my lemon lime hydrate, because that's important to me. As you know, my goals, my physical goals, my personal goals are hydration, protein, and moving my body. So in order to achieve those goals, um, I, it's accountability. It's like coming on here every day and showing up. And not only that, you know, sharing my goals with you and, you know, following through and then I go to my Get Fit with Mel and I work out with them and I tell them they are holding me accountable just as much as I'm holding them accountable. Same thing when I coach my team is if I'm not doing the work, why should I expect them to do the work? You lead by example. The only thing that stuck out to me in that one was, did she put three <laughs> different drink mixes in one? She's like making her own little concoction there, isn't she? It's like she's like a witch doing a witch's brew kind of thing. Just like, is that what people are doing in Plexus? Everyone just makes their own drinks. <laughs> it's like, this is definitely helping with this. Also, are those made for like one packet is for like eight ounces of water or whatever. And then meanwhile, these guys have eight ounces of water and they're putting like three packets in it. Ew, stop. There's no way any of it tastes good, dude. And here's the thing. I know you've heard this before, but... You have to show up. You have to show up is every putting day another for yourself, one in there? your family, you know, whatever it is that's important to you. If it's important to you, you will show up and you will not make excuses for not showing up. Um, you have to do the work. You have to be intentional. You have to lead. If you're a leader, if you are, you know, in the role of, um, you know, you, you've got people that depend on you then you figure it out. You figure it out. All things are doable. All things are possible. All things are figure outable. You know, I did that. I didn't go complaining about this and that, this and I just did it. I just do it. You just show up and that's what matters. And people see that when you're positive and you're intentional and you're showing up. But see, with that, I'm like, people in multi-level marketing companies feel like they are showing up every day, all the time. So what are you going to say to those people? Oh, you're just not showing up hard enough. <laughs> you're not showing up well enough. Like, you need to show up in a more flamboyant way. <laughs> I can't. And then she's just like, I just showed up and I did it. It's like, how is that training anyone? That's not training. That's like you literally admitting that you got lucky. <laughs> showing up is not enough. I guess I always say this too, is that like in order to be successful in an MLM, like this lady, this is something she had to do. I'm telling you right now, she'll sit here and be like, you have to have good intentions. <laughs> no, what you really truly have to do is you have to set all of your ethics aside, all your morality aside and choose selfishness. Is that, that Like that is what you have to do. You have to be selfish and you have to be okay with profiting off of the losses of others. You have to be okay with you basically being like look how successful I am here's how I did it knowing that most people that you recruit will not see similar results even if they copy every single move that you do what worked for you might not work for them probably won't work for them you just happen to be at the right place at the right time and you just so happened to decide to choose selfishness over doing what's right and just being a good person once you reach that crossroad where you kind of wake up and you realize like what it is you're involved in when it comes to MLMs, you have to make a choice. You either say, fuck it, I'm gonna keep going with it, and then you become the person I just described. No ethics, no morals, just selfish as fuck, 
absorbed into the business. Everything becomes the business. Everything that you do in your life, every situation you find yourself in always leads back to the business. You live, breathe, drink, bathe in this business. Or you realize that those are the things you have to do and you go, that's not for me. So that's the crossroads that everyone will inevitably come to. And if you're not okay with changing that stuff up about yourself, if your personal morals and ethics aren't really that important to you, or if you want to cherry pick which ethics are worth keeping here at this point so you can succeed in your MLM, whatever it is, it's like you have to make that decision. I finished this drink with this collagen. This more. is the magic fountain of youth. She's doing more. Oh, yeah. Again. Um, She's definitely using a filter in this story, first of all. And I'm sorry, but like, I don't know how old this woman is. Like, if she were to be like, I'm 90 years old, I'd be like, God damn. <laughs> That's amazing. That is the fountain of youth. But I'm looking at her. I'm like, she doesn't look young. She doesn't look youthful. Like, she definitely looks like pretty middle aged, you know? Don't call it the fountain of youth. Not to judge her based on her age. I'm just saying, like, if you're going to call something the fountain of youth, like, you should probably have have results to back it up and I'm not seeing it. Never miss a day. And so many people got free collagen last month. I mean, a ton of people got free collagen. So I'm excited to see their results. How many results scoops did she put in there? Days. Now this month, they can get a free bag of Berry Active. So, you know, let me know if you want information about that. But still, huge, huge cost savings. But along with that, when you start your journey, your Plexus journey, you get so much more than you ever realize. And I say that because I got so much more than I ever realized. The health, the hope, the happiness, but then we added the community. What an amazing community we have here locally as well as across the country. Across um, isn't a word. And we look forward to getting together with each other. So, so much more. I'm just really concerned about what she's about to ingest because that water bottle looked like a, maybe if I had to guess, just I'm really good at guessing fluid ounces. No, I'm just kidding. That looked like maybe a 16 fluid ounce container and it was only halfway filled. So again, eight ounces. And she put three different packets in plus how many scoops of the collagen powder did she put in there? Like two? At this point, you've got to be drinking sludge right? That's not liquid anymore. So nasty. Time to shake this up. So when I got up, I did drink 16 ounces of water. And then, then, because I've been up since, well, the wee hours of the morning. That's how I roll. Then I drank one of these uh, Premier Protein uh, clear drinks. So I've already got 20 grams of protein. And then I'm going to be drinking my pink drink, which has um, that Isopure in it, which that's 30 grams. So I've already, I'm going to start my day um, with basically 50 grams of protein. So is that a little excessive? Hold on. I have to Google. Like that sounds like too much protein, right? <laughs> Can you have too much protein? I can imagine you probably can. According to Mayo Clinic, it says general recommendations are to consume 15 to 30 grams of protein at each meal. Studies show higher intakes, those more than 40 grams in one sitting, are no more beneficial than the recommended 15 to 30 grams at once. Don't waste your money on excessive amounts. Eatthis.com says uh, no more than 30 grams of protein per meal is ideal because excess protein will be excreted through urine. She drank a protein drink and then added more protein to her sludge that she's now ingesting. From what I'm seeing here, that's absolutely unnecessary overkill. And like, how, how much does one of those drinks cost at that point? Oh my God, now I have to look that up. Jesus, they have so many products. Oh my God. It just keeps loading more and more. What are we doing? All right, so two vital biome, four E's and four BioCleanse. What is your regimen and how often do you change it up? Let me know that. She's just popping pills and drinking sludge left and right, baby. 120 BioCleanse runs for $37. Oh, well, 28, I guess, if you're a VIP. Um, vital biome, $37 for how many capsules? 30, oh, Jesus Christ. Ew, look at all the sludgy, like drippy, oh my God, all this shit down here just like glooping around at the bottom. Oh my God. You can like hear her and it's not even slurping. She's like, like gulping it because it's like thick. Gross. Oh, so, there's like foam on her I lip. I had a team member message me and say, hey Mel. It's nasty. I need help with my regimen. I'm working night shift. 
how do I change things up when I'm working night shifts? So my recommendation to her was keep the same schedule. So if you're going to bed, whether that's during the day or at night, take your ProBio 5 before bedtime, okay? When you get up, again, no matter what time that looks like, start your day with your pink drink or how you would normally start your day with your supplements. So you might just have to shift the time, but the regimen stays the same. It just might look different based on when you go to sleep and when you wake up. So if you need help with your regimen, let me know and I will offer you some suggestions too. And I will make lots of commissions off of the hundreds of dollars you spend following the regimen that I recommend to you every single month. Oh, it's so predatory. And then of course you guys, you know that it's not an MLM pitch unless you bring God into it, of course. So she's going to end this training with not only the creepiest look on her face ever, but uh, she's gonna read to us a daily devotion. If you don't know what that is, it's basically like Bible study, like a daily Bible study thing. Like I know my grandparents do it every single morning. My grandpa has like a, I don't know if it's like a just annual, like you just keep rereading it or if they like make new ones every year or probably, I don't know. But there, there are a bazillion different daily devotions you can go through. But you know, it's just another thing to keep you hooked in the religion. So let's hear all about the things that she thinks that God has his hands on in Plexus. Here's our daily devotion. It's titled Destined by Love, and the, the verse is out of Ephesians. <clears throat> Even as in verse. his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him, and blameless in his sight, even above reproach, before him in love. For he foreordained us, destined us, planned in love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ. Oh, is that what God did? That's interesting. Oh, it's it's coming back to me, but didn't he commit mass genocide? <laughs> didn't he kill every single person on earth except for Noah and whoever else was on his ark? But before the world was even a thing, he decided that he was gonna love us like his own children. But then later he messed up and he decided he made a mistake and everything was going wrong and he needed to just drown everyone in a massive worldwide flood to start over. You do that to your own children? Hmm? Well, that's weird. And he loves us so much that if we don't praise him every day, he's going to send us to be eternally roasted in hell for all eternity, forever. He's gonna be on fire forever. Yup. Yeah, what kind of father would do that to his kids though, man? I know this is just like one verse, I guess, out of a book that's like 2,000 pages long, but you know, <laughs> no biggie. There are women who feel so bad about themselves that they get involved with men who will hurt them because they believe that is all they deserve. You need to be around safe people, not people who continue to wound you. God will help you learn to recognize those people if you listen to his wisdom. More on that. If he's so almighty and so knowledgeable, why did he essentially admit he made a mistake and drown everybody? <laughs> why did God create Satan? You know, if he's so all-knowing, if he knew what was gonna happen, he knew that uh, Satan was gonna like betray him. In my opinion, he's not a very wise God. <laughs> Seems to me like he's made a lot of mistakes actually. And then he dealt with those mistakes pretty spectacularly. The first place to start if you need to be loved is with God. He is a father who wants to shower love and blessings upon his children. Unless you don't get on your knees and praise him every day, then he's going to throw you into the fiery pits of hell. Yeah, what a good dad. <laughs> if your natural father did not love you properly, you can now get from God what you missed in your childhood. Love is the healing balm that the world needs, and God offers it freely and continuously. His love is unconditional. Unless. <laughs> I hate it when they say this shit, when they're like, oh yeah, it's, it's just like, <laughs> he loves you unconditionally. Doesn't sound like it. There certainly are conditions to his love. Because if you love somebody, you're not going to throw them into fire. He does not love us if he simply and for all time loves us. He does not love us because we deserve it. He loves us because he is kind and wants to. Lord, your eternal love surrounds me today, and I receive it with a heart full of praise. I am secure in your love and kindness. 
given to me unconditionally. Amen. That is just so brainwashy. If you're one of those people who have never been kind of in uh, involved in any sort of religion or organized religion, I guess, like this is the kind of stuff that they teach you. You go to church and they read you this sh every day. And this is kind of the reason why people stick to it so much because like who doesn't want to be loved, right? Who doesn't want to feel like they're being taken care of? They fail to leave out all this sh stuff that God has done to his creation. If all this shit that God did in the Old Testament is love, then like, I don't want to know what God's wrath is because God damn. Oh, that's probably God's wrath. Damning. <laughs> Hell. My daughter, Abby, was in a really bad relationship and she- You are going to air out your daughter's dirty laundry all over social media. For what reason? To sound righteous and shit? because you're talking about God and also maybe it'll help you sell your plexus, right? Sickening. So I mentioned Abby was in a really bad relationship, a narcissistic, emotionally, mentally, um, verbally abusive relationship. And she really thought that's the best that she could do. She, she really thought that, you know, she couldn't do any better. She didn't know her worth at the time. And thanks to God, he released her from that. And then she found the most amazing man who is now her husband. See, this kind of stuff makes me, <clears throat> it ticks me off because I'm like, God didn't do that for her. She got herself out of that situation. Like she did that. And to like make people believe that they need God to be able to escape really shitty circumstances like this is so frustrating and so manipulative and so gross and I hate it. I have no power unless I have God. I can't bring things out of myself. I can't be strong if I don't have God. It's like, I don't have God and I'm doing great. A lot of the world doesn't have God and they're doing great and they're able to be strong and shit. And you know what? You're able to look at yourself and be like, I did that. But when you're in a place like these people are, they're just like, God did that. It's like, no, like you did. You found the strength within yourself. You didn't need a fake sky daddy to do that for you. And we are so very, very happy because we know that our prayers were answered and we know. Well, how come your prayers were so much more important than all the other women who are still to this day trapped in abusive relationships? What makes you so freaking special? You know, there is a purpose in everything, but know your worth, really surround yourself with good people, all right? You are worthy, you deserve the best. Don't settle, don't think that this is it because it's not. Gross. Anyway, this is the last slide here. Sorry, this was so much longer than I thought it was gonna be, but damn. All right, friends, I hope that something I shared today really helped you in some way, shape, or form. That is my goal. And I love, I do, I love getting such precious, amazing messages from people, um, you know, and it it reminds me, and I told, I told somebody this morning, God love her, even her, grandson is watching when she works out with me and he said um Ma, he said grandma she's so nice and i'm like thank you for sharing that with me it's so simple right it's so simple but it doesn't have to be something really big to make an impact i'm just working out through social media for a few minutes a day but it's making an impact on not only the individual, but even in the family. Wow, you're just so holy. You're so good. You are so gross. I can't even come up with good words to describe this woman anymore. A child said I'm nice, so let me stroke my ego here on Facebook stories or whatever the f this is. Please watch as I stroke my ego, and please, guys, continue to send me messages so I can continue to stroke my ego. Thank you. Love those messages, because it reminds me on a daily basis, I am doing what I'm meant to do, and God is leading me to do that. Have a great day. If God was real, his plan for you would not be to be leading you down a path of scamming people and convincing them to drink sludge every day. I hate it when they say that. Like, God brought this opportunity to me. No, he didn't. Because first of all, I don't believe he's real. And second of all, even if he was real, I think he would want better for you, especially if he loves you so much. Oh, we can end it here. Damn, guys. Well, before we say goodbye, I just want to say thank you to some people here. The list of names that I'm about to read off are my financial supporters. They get 
access to things like our private Discord server, we have a postcard club, early access to videos, they'll get early access to this video, and sometimes even more than that. So if any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash savannahmarie, or you can click the join button beneath this video to join my YouTube membership. It's all the same, just whatever platform you want to join on is fine by me. And with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Hula Chowdown, Janelle Pratt, Amanda Shannon, Elizabeth Wyatt, Jacqueline Nutton, Nitty Dragon, Leanne, Sheila Tapia, Willow Raymond, Alice W, Caroline Reed, Charlotte Treese, Daniel Urena, Maddie Darley, Marley Fletcher, Ray, Tuesday the 13th, Turd Ferguson, Mira S.I.K., LaSalle Story, Laura Jensen, Mother Dragon 82, Han Bjornsson, Baby Pink Pearl, Martine Hubert, Fallon Lowry, Hannah, Little Birdie, Miss Blue, Blazed Goddess, Carrie K, Love to be Evil, The Best Elephant, Jessica Billhart, Mitchie 84, Jess Cronfeld, Emion, and Auntie Lou. And to the rest of my financial supporters, thank you so much for being here and being you. And even if you're not a financial supporter, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Because YouTube loves watch time, so the longer you're here, the more YouTube will want to push my videos out to other people. So thank you so much. Keep making waves, babes. I'll smell you all later. Mommy Tsunami, out.